Today we're looking at Roland's in-home HP 702, HP standing for home piano, a fantastic instrument. Their entry price point into their digital piano line really has some fantastic unique features. We're going to be going over them. We're going to be listening to a fantastic piano modeling system. There's no sample. There's no real piano. It's all in your mind. No, but we will be talking about what makes it unique, what makes it special and what makes Roland a fantastic choice for a digital piano. Hi, this is Ted with Alamo Music Center in downtown San Antonio, Texas. I'm Patrick Marr. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. Make sure you check out our new website, alamopianogalleries.com. It highlights our nine stores across the country. Find out which one's nearest to you. Come say hi. Come check us out. We'd love to see you and show you some really cool instruments. Well, we have Roland today. Uh, we do have a new partnership with Roland. We're really excited about it. Uh, when you think about Roland Digital Pianos, the, the first thing that comes to mind is schools and institutions. It's you know, widely selected as the number one choice. It's on all the bid. We do a lot of bidding here at the store. On uh, We have a whole government sales and institutional team. Um, but just time after time on, the, on, on requests, bid requests for school districts, for t music teachers, um, we see Roland's HP series and we see their LX series as one of the most requested instruments of any piano, whether acoustic or digital. So it's really fun to have it here. It's really fun to see what all the hype is about. And we're really excited to have them as a full line. We'll be reviewing all the HP series, all the LX series. Um, today we are looking at the, the entry level price point, the HP 702. But before we get there, we did want to open up with a piano fact. Well, since we're looking at these um, upright pianos, the piano fact we have today is the unfinished business in the back end of a piano and on upright pianos. Yeah, when you think uh, about an acoustic and you turn it around, you, you see... It's kind of rustic looking. It look, it's, like, it's like exposed wood, but not like the wood on the outside of the piano. It's like, it's like a, it looks like an unfinished wood. It's, it's right. a piece of spruce and there's ribs on, on it um, and there's back, back posts. posts. And it really does... It like, the whole rest of the instrument is, a, is like either like a high polish finish or a real nice walnut carving. And then you turn around and it looks unfinished. It looks kind of like wait, scaffolding. I'm looking and, inside the yeah. piano. Why is why am I doing that? So what's the the purpose behind the that? The purpose behind that is so that it, it actually projects the sound off of that soundboard against your wall and then back out into the room. So that it uses the wall much in the same way as a lot of those the Bose speaker systems work, where it's reflected sound. Mm -hmm. And it's based on uh, bouncing the sound off of the wall so that it has this total room ambient sound where you can't say it's coming from right there. So, and, and that's part of the, the projection uh, acoustic performance that Roland took in consideration with their upright pianos is just don't put a speaker on top of the thing or underneath it. Try to build a cabinet that resonates like a real true acoustic piano and place the speakers where they will bounce sound in the same type fashion. Yeah. And we see it too on, you know, as on high end digitals too, where like, you know, Kawhi has their soundboard on the back the of their- The introduction to hybrid with their, soundboards. They're 901. And so, uh, so it is, it is very important where an instrument's placed. Usually people kind of get the idea. They're like, oh, the, the upright piano just goes against the wall. And like, you see it all the time, but there's actually a reason why it goes against the wall. And it's not just for space concerns. It's because that's where it's supposed to be. So the unfinished part is finished. Uh, yep. And uh, and so, as we look at Roland today, we uh, we do want to talk about the unique features, um, what make their HP series and their LX series kind of a different category than the other two big digital piano makers. Um, so when you think about digital pianos, there's the big three: there's Yamaha, there's Kawhi, there's Roland. Um, and Yamaha and Kawhi have a, a very similar story as far as we're acoustic piano manufacturers and we need to enter the digital digital space. Let's use our best instruments and, and mic them up and get it, you know, in a portable package so that someone can have it with headphones or have it and play it and record and never have to tune it. Roland has a different approach and, you know, their whole story is, is, is kind of centralized in a place of research and development. It's scientific. It's, they're the scientists of, of, of and you, you see it not only, you know, Roland here, we're looking at their, at their pianos, but throughout their lines, you know, they, they're really big in pedals. Boss, oh, Boss Roland pedals are, are the most sold pedals of all guitar pedals. Um, and so they're really big um, on effects, on, on, uh, on creating sound that isn't from 
a, a traditional instrument, right. and they've kind of created a new instrument. What uh, Roland has done is they've uh, created a whole modeling system, right? And so, as opposed to sampling, which is typical for like Yamaha and Kawhi, because mm -hmm. we build pianos. Let's put the sound of our pianos into our digital pianos. And so that's actually a plus and a minus for them because how much research and development did they really do on modeling and other alternative sound sources? Mm -hmm. Not much because they had access to their own pianos. And that it was the shortest route to developing a, a digital piano was just get samples in it. Yeah. And at first, what you do not have on any of the sounds on here, and it's so beautiful on the acoustic sound, even on their entry line model, a low note, no matter how long you let it ring with the sustain pedal on, no how many how many notes you have ringing, you will not get. You don't get that repeated sample being tapered at a lower volume every time, so you could actually hear it lowering itself down in volume. Uh, that has gotten better over the years as the type and the quality of mm -hmm. samples, but from the you know way back in the you know. 90s. Yeah, the 90s. I mean, you had these 8-bit machines, then they went to 12-bit, 16-bit, and then finally 24-bit digital recording. It doesn't actually produce the best piano sound. It gets you a best recorded piano, piano sound. sound. And so, yeah, so Roland kind of decided to blow it all up and say, let's make a fully modeled instrument. They started with their V-Pro, um, or their V-Piano. V-Pro is the... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the plate. But that's the, 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 plate. V, the, the Roland V-Pianos, v uh, I had was always given notification from a couple of professionals. I know they got one right away, and I thought, Good. man, that's a lot of money for a thing that pay, plays one sound. And it, was, and it was just revolutionary. It came out in 2012, and it was there was no sample. So there was never a recorded piano. It's a full algorithm that's calculating your keystrokes with relation to the rest of your keystrokes, and it responds like it was a real instrument, um, whereas other instruments are really trying to become what they were originally sampled for. And so Roland really takes a unique approach. Another unique thing is the 10-year warranty, which you just don't see. That, that's almost unheard of. And I was surprised to find out that uh, they claim they have like a point less than something percent, uh, less than 1%, a point something percentage of, of, any, issues. Uh, of any issues. And uh, they're really, really sp sporadic and random. They're far away, they're, it's, they hardly ever mm -hmm. happen. And when they do happen, it's just easier to send someone there. Yeah, they take they it. take care of it in your home, which is cool. And that explains to me why teachers, why music ministers at churches or any kind of institution place where there's someone in charge, particularly choir and chorus directors. Mm -hmm. I'm not picking on them, but they usually just want a real piano that works. Yeah. And these things here are better than a real piano because they're always in tune mm -hmm. and they always work. And from a teacher or even a person at at, at home. It's going to work. Your confidence is going to be real high, or for 10 years, the guy will come here and fix it. I still remember being in choir class and using the teacher always would turn on the metronome on the, you know, like just having oh, those little, so dull. Yeah. Just, just those, just those like little things that are like, hey, this thing does a lot. Um, and nowadays with the, the capacity with Bluetooth connectivity, Roland was the first company to use Bluetooth on their digital pianos. They've been doing it for a very long time. Uh, but Bluetooth MIDI connectivity and Bluetooth audio. So you're able to use the sound system from the Roland piano connect it to your phone and say, hey, play anything off of Spotify, anything off Apple Music, off of YouTube, and it comes through the speaker system um, and you're able to play along. It also has uh, applications that are from Roland, piano designer applications and recording stuff, so you can use this and unlock all those features with, with an iPad or with a tablet, so it makes it you know, very versatile, very user-friendly um, and using stuff that everybody uses. Um, and so. A lot of times the, the, the traditional way was to menu dive to try to get as many features as you can into an instrument. Yamaha even went as far as putting a full touch screen on their instrument. Nowadays, everything connects to your smart device and, uh, and Roland kind of foresaw that and you know, said, hey, we're just gonna make apps and you can connect wirelessly to it. Uh, this, uh, this model right here, the HP 702, has the uh, progressive hammer action four. This is, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting because when you look at the price point, it is not um, what you would expect in this model because right when you move up to any other model, it immediately upgrades the action. So this is like, let's give like a, a more beginner action, but let's load up the piano with our best, you know, our best modeling with a great sound system um, and with over 300 voices in it. So they, they give you a, a, a robust instrument, but the, the action isn't the wood action that they have on the, on the upgrades. But I'll tell you what. For the price point, 
and the way that this thing responds as a real piano, I think they're going to blow away a lot of the competitors. I mean, yeah, it, and they do, and they and they get requested, and and the most requested is the one right above this, the HP seven hundred four. Um, but the 702 is very popular in labs as well because it's a little bit of a, of a price break. Um, I believe online these sell for about $27.99 right now. Um, and so, you know, it's sub $3,000. It offers a, a, something that no other digital piano can offer, that limitless polyphony. The realness of that polyphony, the limitless polyphony is just, it, it makes you forget that you're actually at a digital piano. So just very, very cool. Um, and so let's take a listen to it. Ted's going to play it for us. We're going to listen to the piano sounds. Uh, we'll also go through some of the, the voices. We're not going to go through all 300, but we will touch some of the electric pianos, organs, things like that. So we hear those. Um, and then we'll come back talk about a couple more features that make this one unique um, and might be uh, uh, something that interests you.
Patrick, other than just the acoustic pianos, and I've already talked a bit on some of the other models about the quality of the electric pianos. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I did notice that is really different in the modeling is when you get to the string section. I had a real good time playing the string sounds because so many, whether it's Yamaha or Kawhi, their strings just, there's the, the, Sounds like a pad almost the, Yeah, they haven't updated those sounds in years and it almost, it works like a pad, but it doesn't have any sense of, I don't know. The strings on here just seem like real. They sound more like uh, you're playing an orchestra as opposed to fake strings. It mm -hmm. feels like you got some really good sounds there and you can cut out your parts and get some really nice well, voices. I, and I know they've worked on modeling for a lot of their voices. Um, and so as you move up some on the series, the, 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 the strings and things do become modeled instead of just a sample. Right. Um, and so, you know, Roland, the RD2000 is a very popular gigging instrument because it has a lot of... Uh, a lot of the features that these high-end HPs and LXs have, um, and uh, it's just very, very, very popular. Um, the HP series, uh, we had talked about this in one of the other videos, but it started in 1983. That's how long, that's 40 year history of a, of a product. And so this, you know, this is, they pride themselves on saying this is their piano. They're, you know, they don't make acoustic pianos. This is their piano, though. They don't, right. they don't call it a digital piano. No, they just call it a rolling piano. Um, and so it's, it's, they really are putting their stamp on it and saying, we stand behind this. We have a 10-year warranty on it. Uh, it has the best, the best sound in, in the industry because it's not sampled. And they really stand behind that and say, so it, it's, it's like, does, do you prefer this or do you prefer that? Um, and, so, and so Roland tries to put themselves in a separate category and really tries to push themselves as we're an R&D company that's kind of research the best thing that we can do and then create it. Well, not only that, you're getting so much more than just an instrument. You're getting 10 years of service. You're probably not going to need, mm -hmm. but just knowing that it's there if you need it. And yeah. that, that right there is the comfort in any person that's a music minister, a school teacher, or a, you know, at a university or anything or required. It's going to work. Yeah. So if you've owned an HP before, please leave comments. Let us know what you liked about it. Let us know uh, what you thought would be an upgrade if you got the 702 and it's like, I wish I would have got the 704. I wish I would have got the LX series. Please leave comments like that. We will be comparing these products against each other as well as against some other similar manufactured pianos on the market and, and the price point. Uh, but yeah, we'd just love to hear those comments and see uh, what you guys think uh, and, and hear what you guys think because you you know lots of owners out there that have, have loved Roland for a very long time and maybe they switch from another manufacturer or maybe they're switching at this point. Uh, but we'd love to hear all that and, and your reasoning behind it because that's just great information for people who are out there looking for the right That's great information for us too because we're really excited about becoming a full full Roland piano line. Mm -hmm. We this is new to us, and yeah, so, so it's exciting. We've been we've been loving the HP and the LX series. We will be uh, reviewing the GP series as well, the Grand Piano, the GP9, which is their new release, the GP9M as well, which is like a player piano digital, which is just going to be really fun. Um, so we're really excited about that. Make sure you guys are subscribed so we can continue to make you guys great content and bring you great videos. Uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to answer anything that you might be wondering about. Uh, but again, Ted Barsalu, I'm Patrick Marr, and we'll see you next time.